No, 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 no. You've got no. this all wrong. We're from California. We're right on time. Yeah, that's right. California we, we time. We arrived on time. Yes. That, that's, that's true. That's, that's right. true. We just work comfortably here on time. But you got you, you got lost everywhere. Everywhere there was to get lost, you got lost. Yeah, as I was, uh, you know, telling you earlier, you know, nobody explained to us that the roads go both directions here. So yes, they just say go up Connecticut Avenue. And up, and one man's up is another man's. Find 50 East. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we did that, you know. Yeah, via 495. Fortunately, we had a backgammon board in the car, yeah, so we helped. were able to, uh, you know, figure out what to so do. So you wound up waiting somewhere, right? Oh, yeah, we've been waiting. We've been waiting behind the back of a 50 Chevy, waiting. actually. <laughs> waiting and waiting. That'd be a great sign. We'll find that in a couple of minutes, and let's see these words and come right back, okay? If you Perfect now, come on in with Chevy Circle, huh? Yeah, cute, man. Great. We've seen all the sights on Chevy Chase Circle. <laughs> Around? But it's okay. I think David Johansson, the first time he uh, came to Bethesda, he went up to Suburban Hospital. Kind of strange when you're supposed to be at a radio station, you wind up in a hospital, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm well, glad that didn't happen to us. <laughs> I am too, come to think of it. Really? I, I'd much rather be here than the hospital. It's much easier giving a, a, an interview on a radio station than it is in a hospital. But you got to bring out an I, I, IV. An IV? Yes. As opposed to an so IV. We feel, you know, right, so we yeah. can feel like we're, you know, right. they doing have that, the right thing. They have those, uh, those alcoholic beverages now that are in a, look like IVs. I oh, really? You, should, you see those? You, you, can, you, 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 can buy, you can buy those. I'm a like, traditionalist that. myself. It's <laughs> nervous, nervous, bless his really, classic Really, transfusion. Artwork. Transfusion. Said, hey, daddy-o, make it typo. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to that guy? I don't know, but I'll tell you. He hasn't uh, found Jesus, has he? God, I hope not. <laughs> I just hope Jesus hasn't found him yet, man. You never can tell. We are talking to, to Barry Flast, who is a, a new member of Kingfish. No, not a new member. No, no, no. Twelve years. Twelve years. That's a new yeah. member, actually. Yeah, I guess really, so. You know, I guess One so. of the newer members, yes. Yeah, really. <laughs> Twelve, I didn't know that. I was actually in the band before Bob Weir. Oh, and they threw you out? No, I quit. <laughs> oh, okay, well, why did you quit? Right. Well, yeah. well, that's a, uh, it's actually a long story. You got a minute? Really? You really? Okay, is it is it uh, okay? I mean, we're not going to open up a, any cans of worms, are we? Can you we tell? We might. We might. We'll tell exactly. it anyway. Right now, let's have it. Just scratch off the big cosmic scabs. No, there, actually, you know. I um. Let's let's go ahead. Let's. Uh, the let's band name had a names. keyboard player before me. In, in early, the band formed in late '73 when uh, Dave Torber quit the New Riders, and uh, they had a keyboard player named Mick Ward, who died in a car accident, and so I oh, basically like replaced story. Mick Ward. And I went and did a gig uh, in Juneau, Alaska with him. And uh, when we came back from Alaska, we just sort of fell out of touch. And that's when Matthew called Bobby, and that's when Bobby joined the band. And then how'd you come back in the band 12 years ago? Matthew. Uh, uh, actually, I actually came back in the band in 1977 because uh, the band had the broken group. up. Uh, you know, Bobby had gone back to the Grateful Dead. Uh, the drummer, Chris Harold, had quit. Uh, Robbie Hodnott was about to die. <laughs> You remember that night we played at Winterland? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, God, that was a strange curse night. you for all those great right. cells. <laughs> now, you're actually from New York, aren't you? You're not yes, from, aren't from the I'm West from Coast. That's why I mean, he drove. <laughs> <laughs> you can drive in snow. How did you wind up with these San Francisco guys? You're on the West Coast. I'll tell you. No I, um, I, used to, I used to go to the Fillmore East all the time and see Quicksilver and Country Joe and the Fish and Jefferson Airplane. And, uh... You know, San Francisco had a, a, a lot of mystique for a, 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 a New York teenager. It used to be the Village Theater. Yeah, we used to call it Mystic. Remember? Actually, it was the Anderson. Remember the, remember the Village Theater? You, you mean on 8th Street? It was, it was the Fillmore East was the Village Theater. No, originally it was the Lois Anderson. Back, that's back before my time. I, yeah. I don't remember that's that. when I was a kid, and I used well, to go to movies there. Uh, <laughs> I'm proving you've been in the band for 12 years. I, I remember the Village Theater with uh, with Murray Decay and his shows. And hey, the, 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 yeah, Murray Decay. Yeah, that's right. true. Did, you're right. Yeah. That, 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 is what that later became the film Maurice. Right. Right. But originally it was a movie theater. You go back before I do. So what what, <laughs> what what happened? You saw the movie and you joined the band? That's, why, that's <laughs> why you're doing the interview. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I, I needed to get away from New York and I just picked the furthest place I could find on the mainland. And that was California. Didn't want to go to Hawaii. And, no, I didn't, really didn't want to go it to didn't Hawaii. Want to Actually, I was going out to visit a friend of mine, another, uh, another cohort of John's, Nick Gravenitis. Oh, no. Yeah, that's who got me out to California. Oh, yeah, going bad at some no. Time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then don't. <laughs> no, I got to Actually, Nick, I've got to give him a call and tell you. He's probably wondering where I am. Yeah, right? really? Nick and I started making an album uh, last week. Last week? Yeah. Right before you left for the tour? Yeah, I should give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> He's wondering, hey, John, are you going to phone your parts in? <laughs> What's going to happen when you don't show up? Yeah, really. Whose album is it? Well, it's our album. Nick and I have Thunder and Lightning. Oh, Thunder is and Lightning. I'm Lightning. <laughs> You're Thunder and... Yeah, we, yeah. well, the band's <laughs> you know, affectionately referred to as Thunder Thighs and Lightning Lips. 
And uh, this is John Cipollina, by the way, for those of you who, uh, you know, who don't right. know. I'm a friend of Barry Flask's. <laughs> uh, I will be playing on the card tonight. As a matter of fact, you're We're in other you're in six six man tag team event that will be down at uh, at the Roxy. You're in the other band. I'm in the other band, right? Yes. The quote other. The quote now, is is this a package? Band. Are you guys going everywhere together? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. This is Kingfish, and it's called The Sounds of San Francisco. The Sounds of San Francisco. SOS. That's yeah. like SOS? Yeah. Yes. That's what they're affectionately referring to. Affectionately yeah. referred to, yeah. Otherwise, we're known as the Bay Area Bozos or the Bay Area Burnouts. Or the Marin County Melons. Right. You sure you don't play basketball? Uh, you have a basketball Look thing? at me, man. Do I look like I play basketball? <laughs> look, you, if, you know, my, you know... My mouth dribbles. My my fingers do not. No, actually, no. I. Um, I'm what do you much... do for sports, John? What do you do for? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I fence. Actually, excellent sport. Yeah. So Barry, I guess you move out in the West Coast now, right? You moved out there with the rest of these. Fourteen years, yeah. Fourteen years. Yeah. Don't you miss New York? Yeah, a good fourteen nope. years has been. Yes, actually. it's a one. It's been a wonderful fourteen. In years. fact, the only reason we, if you really want to know, we came out of here because it was a little wet out there. Even though I talked to him I'm yesterday, glad we it was got away. Five degrees yesterday. I know it was beautiful yesterday. Beautiful out there, and I talked to a girlfriend back there. I called up and said, "How's everything going out there? I hope you're all right." And they're going, ah, <laughs> <laughs> well, "How's the weather out there, Bozo? You know, <laughs> boy, are we going to have a good time tonight?" Yeah. Well, it's wet out here also. It is wet out here, but it different takes kind three of wet. or seven different seconds kind of wet. Yeah. Turn wet. I'm not used to snow at all. Actually, most of the snow I see that's not indoors is on postcards, you know. <laughs> or in those little things, those desks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got one of those. I got one of those when I was a kid. Me and my twin used to sit there and turn this thing upside down and go. <laughs> oh, they're great. Huh? But you see, you guys only come east a couple times a year, don't you? Yeah. Well, well yeah. It's, you know, we can only get out that often. Actually, you know, I'm not allowed out of the house that much. <laughs> and, and you know. You still live in Mill Valley? I still live in Mill Valley. In fact, I live. I live so much in Mill Valley. <laughs> I am uh, I'm a mile and a half into the state park. I live at over 2,200 feet up on top of the mountain. That's right, you do. You live in a state park? Yeah, I live right next door to Carlos Santana, which means there goes the property values. <laughs> 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 They've declared you a national monument? No, a national. Uh, I've been declared a public nuisance. Do they have those National Park Service guys? They, they hang out there and... They do, they do. They come those over. Cells? In fact, uh, uh, I killed my first deer there not long ago, and I got to call one of them and said, I hit one. And uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I mean, we got little... We put checks on the side of our cars after we get things like that. Oh, not. you need a license to do that? No, 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 no. Actually, you know... Especially not for skunks. No. I'm Actually, for Scott, a lot of those. We, we, I, I'd rather hit a deer any day. <laughs> they don't follow <laughs> you around. Well, yeah. That's true. We have very small deer out there. Oh. We have no mice. No mice. In no fact, mice. cockroaches. That's something that I come to the West Coast, and we don't have cockroaches. On the West There are no cockroaches on the West Coast? Well, I don't know about the West Coast, but there are none in Mill Valley. There are none in, in, in Marin County. No, they can't afford the rent. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought of importing them? <laughs> no. Well, like I said, we've got, we've got, uh, um, We've got raccoons. We'll send you a six-ounce jar if you want a cockroaches, and you can... A little cockroach little... farm. Here you go, yeah, kids. That would be a good thing. You know, I could probably make a fortune with something like that, you know. <laughs> I, you'd take off on the ant farms, you know. You just put it in a little TV and send it back home. I got some in my apartment if you want. You know, we'll just put them in a can there and put a little we'll label them. We'll market them. You will be sure and give you our address. Okay, we'll send, sure. you, send you the cockroaches in the... Uh, they're a good source right. of protein, I understand. Somebody yes. wants to... Yes. Yes. That's, that's, that's what all the boat people say, right? When, when I used that's to why we've imported boat people. That's what... No, they, they do there cause disease, but they are a good source of protein. So it's, it's very uh, true. I don't... Anything that, like... I mean, they're, they're just too cocky for me. No pun intended. But they, uh... Uh, anything they can go through, you know, they glow, but they come out of uh, uh, fallout and all that stuff. Yeah. Know? They will outlive us. That's they sure. will outlive us, you know. Big deal. Okay. <laughs> we'll For ruin it. You can live in it, you know. <laughs> For years. Well, Barry, you brought us a Matt Kelly. This is actually a Matt Kelly record with everybody in the world on it. Even Pretty I much. am on it. Even, yeah, John. even John Cipollina is on this record, This is what's too. known as Marin County Incest. We do this. Everybody... I mean, let's see. We've all played together. For how long? I mean, how many bands have you been in, you know? I, I mean, can't count them. But how many different people have you played with? Not that many. No, you I can know? count those. I'm, I mean, yeah, you can count that on one hand. <laughs> but the bands have been hundreds. Right. Yeah, you have a notch for that, too? You've... Yeah, yeah, except no, I don't we... do it on my car. I do it on yeah. my dog. How many bands have you been fired from? <laughs> uh, See, there's been a few of those, too. <laughs> no, you don't get Kingfish fired from them. <laughs> Actually, what you do is you just rename it, and then they don't tell you where the rehearsals are. But we don't Yeah, that's fired. that's really basically what happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The new band is called Marl. Right. They find a new rehearsal. Well, they got the Sounds of San Francisco. It used to be the San Francisco All-Stars. Remember that? 
There's he another. Says he should remember. There's, a, there's another incarnation. <laughs> Ooh, here's have some salt. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. No. Actually, I, I figured that it was called the Sound of San Francisco for a reason. Yes, it was. I decided. I figured. Of course. Now, Stoically. they brought me out here not to think. So. Okay, I won't think. You won't think. But I'm back right now. Yes. Go figure. Now, why did they call it the Sounds of San Francisco? If there's a reason. Because we're all from San Francisco. That and you makes sense. Think that, uh, you people think, you know, that we're pretty cool, I guess. I mean, like, I, I noticed this the other day, man. We always at a gig and somebody goes, oh, wow, oh, wow. And this guy kept going, oh, wow. And I kept thinking, what does she mean by that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, like, we play, I play around San Francisco all the time. They don't call us the sounds of San Francisco. No, they don't. they don't. They call us, you but, know, they, but, but, they call us older musicians. Is what they call them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we work. I can work in San Francisco and around the area every bit as much as I can work out here. The only thing is out here, they go, wow, you're from San Francisco and you played here and you played here. Back there, we just... Hey, this is normal. I'm going on yeah. 43 years old. I've... And I don't have a day job. Yeah. It's and he, true. And he know. doesn't look a day over 20, so that helps. I cheat. <laughs> have you ever thought about radio? It's a great job. You sit here and twirl, my, twirl dolls like I do. Yeah. Yeah, except I don't talk so good. Neither do I. Look at the fucker it's got in me. <laughs> Where has it gotten you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got, got the comfy chair. <laughs> got, got me right here. You're gonna, you went around Chevy Chase Circle, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I got to ask you this question, Barry. I, this record you gave me here, it, it's, yes. got, it's got, uh, there are one, two, three, there are five dead people on yes, it. Yes, I know. And they, they have asterisks. It says deceased here. What, 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 the, <laughs> what does that's that mean? That's how old that record is. It took, that's a long time. Okay, okay, are you, are you yes, kidding me? That record there? was 12 years in the making. Really? Yes. And people don't understand. This is a real hectic business. They I laid mean, down the track 12 years ago. It's really hard. Some, some, no, some were, some were done back in 73. Yeah. Some were done in uh, 78, 79, and then a few more were done uh, 83, 84. Now, were any of them done, like with the original tracks were laid down 12 years ago and you finished it up like last year? Yes. Are you uh, kidding me? Yes. Yeah, that's no, a, no, that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of amazing. Nothing is sacred. Oh. Nothing is sacred. I mean, let's face it, there's what, that's what they call a, um, <clears throat> the compatibility factor. I mean, everything is standardized, you know. A track that went on 12 years ago can be erased today. And, you know, punching in is never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> you know? It's basically that simple. Yeah, that's like I, Arlo singing with Woody, you know, that record he put out. Yeah, or it's like, who was, uh, yeah. <laughs> or Linda and Elvis, doing yeah. Love Me Tender. Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I, I heard what you guys did to the Grease Band, man. I, I, mm -mm. Well, you, you know, you never can. I don't, I don't say anything about the anyway, right? I'm, no, but I'm this, clean. This record, this record basically just, I mean, you know, I, I would like to say that it, it is like <laughs> an archival... <laughs> Um, Half the tracks were laid down 12 years you know, ago. 12 after years everything else is said, after music. everything yeah. else is said, that record does stand on its own merit. Really? Because it, it's living. I mean, it's hard to make a record that isn't a record. A record is like you're capturing time, and it's hard to make a, um, uh, you know, an insincere or record too, because records are very truthful. They're just. You know, you put it down, and after you, I mean, you can sweeten them, and you can mix them, and you can wet them up, and you can do everything. But basically, what you do is there forever. It's in the grooves. Did right. somebody say this? What's in the, what's in the grooves? That. It counts. One of those Motown. Yeah, it's somebody so who had a whole bunch of platinum records. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> well, Barry, <laughs> name some brother. of the dead people on this record. Well, let's see. Uh, you got uh, Keith Godshaw. Yeah, there's a dead person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see, Mike Bloomfield's on there, right? Yeah. yeah How did he lay his tracks down? Dave Torbert, unfortunately, is dead. God, and what that, a that, guy, that, man. That, that I'm, I'm sorry to say, is, I is a real Dave, tragedy. Yeah, he was a sense of humor. That guy had he a He was an incredible, humor. incredible cat. Um, yeah, I amazing. was glad to have worked with him when I did. <clears throat> and let's see, who else has an asterisk next to their name? <laughs> John Chipolano. <laughs> no, no, you're still alive. John, you're alive. You've actually put an asterisk right next to the names of the dead people. Well, then let me see it. You're the one that's got <laughs> well, it. Well, I've got one. Yeah, I, this is oh, the first of time course. I've Now, the, the piano player that I was telling you about, who was originally in Kingfish that I replaced, Mick Ward, he, he's another fellow that passed away, uh, tragically, and uh, Scott Quigley, who was um, the Uncle lead Quigley. guitarist in a band with Matthew Kelly and Dave Torbert, on White Whale Records in 1969 called Horses, produced by John Carter, the guy that now produces Tina Turner. And there was a company that put all those turtle people. records, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, White Whale. White Whale, right. yeah. That was the Turtles label. Anyway, right, yeah. so Scotty was, uh, Scotty was in that band with Torbert and, and Matthew, and then he uh, went on to be in Sammy Hagar's band, and he died while he was in Sammy's band. 
So that's it for the dead Yeah, the people. mortality. Who are some of the living people on the record now? The, well, you yeah. know, you got uh, Garcia and Weir and uh, Kreutzmann. Yeah, all dead people. All dead, dead people. Like and Bred Midland, another dead person. Living uh, dead. We're <laughs> talking about the tracks of the living dead. <laughs> got a lot of Kingfish guys. Uh, Dave Torbert, Robbie Hodnott, Chris Harold, me, uh, Dave Perper, Michael O'Neill. And, uh, mm. you know, sort of other, uh, you know, new riders like Dave Nelson, Buddy Cage, Donnie Baldwin from Jefferson Starship, um, Buddy Cockrell from Pablo Cruz. Oh, God, why did I, why did I say Buddy? <clears throat> Bobby Cochran from Bobby and the Midnights, uh, Jerry Miller from Moby Grape, Jerry Martini, sax player from Sly and the Family Stone, all sorts of people. I just think you guys on. never even saw each other, right, when you did the That's record. That's the neatest thing about this. <laughs> it's one of the cleanest parts of this profession. I did a track on Mickey Hart's solo album with, uh, where I did a solo with, um, um, who's that guitar player? You know, the Which great solos are the first to go. Uh, Sons of Champlin. Terry Harkin. Terry, right, and thank you. I've had more people come up to me and say, God, what was it like doing? That must have been a ah. real high doing that thing with Terry. And Terry and I did it months apart. I never did see him. <laughs> Terry and I are, are good friends. All the other rumors are might be false, but we're just good friends. <laughs> but we uh, we did do a solo together, and, and we weren't anywhere near. I just hope that people ask him, was it good for him, too? You know? <laughs> it's like they ask me, but yeah, that's that's part of the business. You I never think. can tell what they do in the mix. Yeah, because, I mean, now there's two different ways of, perf of playing music, at least two. I mean, one which is performing and one which is recording, and they are completely different because you're dealing with different mediums. You're, when you're when you're dealing with record, you're capturing time. Like the record that you're holding in your uh, little pause there is timeless. It'll be the it'll sound the same, and it will be the same next week as it was. Good taste week. is timeless, also. Somebody said that. But yeah, my, my taste is questionable. <laughs> and then you have performing, where you're dealing with now. And like the people who come to see a live show, like the people who come to see us tonight, will see us perform, and we're going to be performing, you'll be performing, I'll be performing. And tell them where, John. The Roxy, yes. I believe. Correctly. Formerly the Club Saba in Washington, D.C. The Saba Saba in Washington, D.C. And we're going to have a good time. I'll tell you why we're going to have a good why time. Why are we going to have a good time? We're going to have a good time man, because man. we didn't play yesterday. Man. <laughs> That's we're right, we had a day off. Horny as hell. <laughs> and, yeah, we Don't got lose Oh, show and tell. Yeah. Uh, well, I've got it written on a piece of paper. <laughs> okay, we have, uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to say one of my very close friends and old pal, Greg Douglas, who's played with um, Steve Miller, the great Kin Band, Hot, Hot Tuna, Tuna uh, Mistress. Mistress. His mistress Him is going to be here. Didn't yeah. he wasn't he Raven with you? Yes, Greg and I started a band. We had a, uh, a, uh, a big rock band, a big band. It was a seven piece band, two lead guitars, two drums, two keyboards and a bass player and uh anyway greg douglas and i will be playing lead guitars and we have a third guitarist alex uh liggett wood who plays with santana and quite well too a hell of a, little a, hell singer. Of a singer too. hell of a singer and what a sense of humor he's a little um he's a little scotsman <laughs> and if you want to see some music with some funny people those three guys are okay and then we have um Dave Morgan, who is with Santana uh, on bass. And also with Kingfish last and year. And also with Kingfish last year. Last See what I'm talking about, the summer. incestuous part of it yeah, here? Yeah, that's right. In fact, he was with the San Francisco All-Stars. I played with him <laughs> one other time. He came out here. And and uh, <clears throat> and then we have a drummer, uh, Joey Covington, who played with um, know, the airplane in uh, Hot, Hot Tuna. Tuna. And, uh, I remember that. I'm not going to tell you about the time that uh, back in the old studio in Bethesda they were uh, a Buddy and, and Joey started the fist fight. No, I, I've been having more fun. We fired him on the radio station there, as a matter of fact. I don't remember that. I remember. I do, he, I do. I, Buddy I, got up and was drunk as a skunk and fired him on the air. I don't remember. And, uh, Is this the San Francisco All-Stars tour? Yes. Was a, that was in yeah, 1979, yeah, yeah. in May of 79. That was the last time we met, John. The last time we met was, uh, I used to do an, an all-night radio show. And it was I remember I was hassling you about Link Ray. Right, you, exactly. See the gray cells. Isn't that horrible? I should... Exactly, you were, right. right. You That's asked right. me where, where you could find Link. I found him. Where? I haven't He's seen him. Copenhagen. Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> Last I saw him, he was in Amsterdam, but I think he came back for a while. No, he came back? back for a while, and he's in Copenhagen. I had not from four or five wives, I think. But that was Still doing the Rumble, right? Yeah, man. You know, Rumble was copywritten in 1957, mm -hmm. and it's copywritten to Link Ray Sr. because he was beating Alan Ray back then. Mm -hmm. He's my hero. <laughs> Link is. Link is my hero. One of my heroes, him. And Juan Caron is another one. Um, 
Let me see. <laughs> anyway, where was I? <laughs> You're talking about the San Francisco, but I should mention who's in Kingfish. Why yeah, don't you do that? Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, we have, to... uh, we're, this is actually a, a rather Forget the unique, commercial. Uh, Listen to this, folks. <laughs> oh, really? We have a, a, a You're unique... You're going to love it to death. A unique um, version of, of Kingfish this time because it's you have acoustic a little, Kingfish. You have a little partner that I play with in, uh, in a group called Zero playing. That's right. Uh, Steve Kimmock is little our Stevie Kimmock, lead guitar player this time. And uh, You don't plug in at all? Well, Steve plays electric guitar, and uh, Boy, Matthew he. plays a little acoustic and a little electric, but it's basically acoustic. Um, is there a basically polite? acoustic? This is yeah, the polite basically. version of Kingfish. Go this ahead, is the anyway. polite, right. The, the, Excuse me, go ahead. The, the, mellow, the mellow Kingfish, uh, and of course, Matt Kelly and There's myself, three. Barry Flast, and Four. we have a very talented uh, lady with us, Anna Rizzo, goes back also a long way in uh, uh, San Francisco music. She had a band called Grutna. Uh, that worked with Marty Ballon, and uh, she played drums in the later version of Country Joe and the Fish. She was uh, he one called of the... me a couple months ago. Do you know that? What's that? Country Joe. He called. He called me. Uh, yeah? Oh yeah. He was supposed so, to do an East Coast tour, but I don't think it ever happened. No, no, I know. Because I, I work guy. with the, I work with him in this record company, Rag Baby Records. Is that still in existence, Rag Baby? Of course, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm promoting the new Jody Guthrie album as we speak. Yeah, I've oh, heard about that. As we speak. This as we it. speak. Yes. Rag Baby. Do you ever do anything with the records that I've got on? You mean the Terry and the Pirates records? Oh, yeah. Well, there's no, I mean, they're kind of, they're kind of, uh, they're in the catalog, oh, John. So I mean, my mother's been hitting on it. <laughs> now, now, Rag Baby started in Berkeley, is that correct? That's correct. That's right? And, true. With the they, very first Country Joe and the Fish EP. Right. They put out the original Country Joe and the Fish EP. What year was that? That was 1966. And what has wow. happened since? The record company's been in existence continuously since that time? That's right. And what are some of the things besides the Jody Guthrie record that, uh... That's okay. It gets us both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm thinking. Right? Okay, you think I'll talk. Um, well, currently we have the uh, the debut album by Jody Guthrie. Yeah. Uh, Arlo's brother, Woody's other son, as they say, which is a, a record that was produced by Country Joe. All right. Um, I remember that rambling Jack Elliott tune about, Good night, Arlo. Good night, Jody. <laughs> Good night. Little, remember that one? No. It's on the Young Brigham record. Really? Yeah. Out of print, by the way. Um, and also we have... Um, a solo piano, blues piano uh, album by David Bennett Cohn, who is the oh. keyboard player in Country Joe and the good Fish. Good cover, too, I might add. Yeah, That's very good cover. Thing. That's called At the Piano, that record. Um, and then we have um, the third album by Rocky Sullivan. It's another fellow that John knows intimately, having That's played right. with him for... We're just good friends, though. I'd like to put that in right now. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, Rocky's got uh, his third album now for Rag Baby so called Caught in the Crossfire. Greg Douglas and Nicky Hopkins and I were in That's it. right. Greg Douglas and Nicky Hopkins played with and Rocky Sullivan. And Mario Cipollina, mm -hmm. that's right. Uh, John's erstwhile famous brother now. He's fam yeah. Now he's famous, yeah. right? Now he used to be a bar band. I used to be Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah, my brother no, used Huey to Lewis be American Express. my brother. Now I'm his brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right for years, right? Right. Um, let's see. And um, the... Uh, Probably the next album, I mean, the, the the last album that Country Joe put out was A Peace on Earth, which was in late 84, early 85. But he's got a couple of new things in the works now. We've got one called The Vietnam Experience, which is all his Vietnam songs redone, you know, Feel Like I'm Fixing to Die, Agent Orange, Who Am I, all that stuff. How come you can't get these records in the East Coast? How come you can't? Yeah. Well, I thought we had pretty decent distribution I'm... here, but I'm starting to find out a little different. I mean, I read about them in magazines like Goldmine, where they yeah, write, right. write about weird records and small record companies. But you, you know, why don't you find yourself a, a major distributor and get get them in all your favorite records to us? Yeah, well, they were trying to get Manson out of jail, but <laughs> sell them at the gigs, right? Yeah. <laughs> really. And also, um, I should mention that I'm going to be doing uh, a solo album for Rag Baby myself hey, hey, this year. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What kind of stuff are you going to do? Um. Well, it's probably going to be fairly uh, modern, you know, anyway. since uh, you know. Um, a, lot of, a lot of synthesizer. I, mean, I am a keyboard player, so I, I have to drag myself into the 80s at some point. Oh, you played that... Uh... <laughs> yeah, it was just inevitable. It was inevitable, it? yes. <laughs> that, 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 my DX7 and I'm, my I'm going to town. DX7. She's just started... Uh, she's just joined the ranks of the musicians, too. Yeah. Last, last one of the family to get into it. So I could sympathize with you. <laughs> but at least you guys can carry your own instruments now, <laughs> That's man. That's yeah. true. We don't need a roadie this trip. God, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so Acoustic Kingfish is a rather interesting little deal, and we suggest very Sounds strongly that you I might add. This is from a Thank you, John. Well, let's listen to a tune from, from actually Match Record with all the dead people on it who have the asterisk. Except for the one live one in the studio now. That's well, supposed to be strange. They laid down the tracks and they died. Except for John. Talk about laying He's down your weary years ago. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that why they keep coming out to see you, man? To That's see if you're right. still with us? That's true. Yeah. This is new, a new dimension. Right through me, but, you know. <laughs> new dimensions to lay down your weary tune. 
Yeah. Aren't they? <laughs> this is this is Bo Diddy. This fight. I get paid for this also. Hey! Yeah. It's on Relics Records out of Brooklyn. Now this is the record company in Brooklyn, right? Where they get a bunch of guys off the street corner who <laughs> That's go right. it, and they put them out. <laughs> now, <how'd> you, <laughs> why are you guys on this record? Why is Match Record on this? I mean, this, he doesn't really do no, well. But we don't know any better. You got to understand. We're from California. We don't know. Somebody goes, well, we got an offer from Relics Records. What do you think about that? And we go, hey, all right, you know. We don't know how they sell records. Somebody was describing the Relics office to me. I've never been to the Relics office. Yeah, I have no idea. Right. I don't know anything about it. You know, for all I know, you know, it's, it's run a out of a motel room. You know, right. I, I've run out of a motel room. No, so. actually, I mean the people at Relics, uh, you know, they're fans. Are, they seem to, they seem to know. Good, they're, they're good people. Les Capel, Tony Brown, they're, they're they good put people. out good doo wop records. Also, what kind, what kind of doo wop fans at the groups do they have on, the, on Relics? Relics? They, yeah, Relics. Oh, you know, the old regular doo wop. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know any doo wop. This, this guy well, puts out. Robert musicians. Hunter, he's a good doo wop. This guy puts out. Yeah, I was on that record, too. <laughs> what, Amalgam Street? Amalgam yeah, Street. Street? Yeah. <laughs> he puts out Street Corner records, also, it does. Yeah, or Robert Hunter. Yeah, well, he's got, he's got Robert Hunter, Hunter, and he's got uh, Your McCalkin, another good doo wop group. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got acoustic hot tuna. That's a great doo wop group. Well, this right. is this is both. I mean, yeah, they have all the footwork written on the back of the records too. You can see it. It's pretty good. I, who does their? Who Are you getting ready to play some music? With yeah, yeah. Their this costumes. Is just, That's what I want to do. This is Bo Diddley's Mona with uh, John playing Sly. How many how many years you've been playing this song, John? <laughs> no, 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 you keep it up. Maybe I, I might even play it tonight. Let me hear what it sounds. You, like. You've been playing it longer than Bo Diddley's been playing it. Actually, yeah, Bo Diddley. Um, he told me once he didn't mind if I played it, so I guess that that was okay. And this version only runs three minutes now. How come you don't not do album signs? It's not my record. <laughs> <laughs> All I did was I brought him the piano player, and they felt so bad. They says, hey, why don't you put something on here, too, Bubba? You mean if, you, if it were your record, we'd, we'd do the, uh, what's closed? That's my fan club, huh? Go, go ahead, John. Read the, read the snow closings. What, why not? Where, where is Please this? Please call before you get back to Washington. Oh. Down no, the snow closings. <laughs> is that the snow closings? <laughs> oh, the snow closings? Hey, here you go, John. Read, here, read the snow closings. John Cipollina does the snow closings. Oh, hey, listen. Oh, this is good. This is right up my, my alley here. School closing, tops, 4.20 p.m. <laughs> Undated. <clears throat> Dozen State University will be closed at 6 p.m. due to the weather. Bowie State College is also canceling all evening classes on both on and off campuses. Yeah. And Howard Community <laughs> Public Schools have canceled all evening activities today because of snow. Oh, boo. So, everybody go to the Roxy. Yeah! Bring your books. We're going to have a study hall <laughs> upstairs in the dressing room. Have a pop There's quiz? going to be a test. It's a pop quiz. Read, read that one over there. Okay. Snow. Upper Marlboro, MD. <clears throat> Prince George's Community College classes and activities scheduled in the county public schools are canceled this evening. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I've, came, I've come out 3,400 miles so that I can bum you people out. But it wasn't my idea. I tell you, we swam out here. It's not my fault. I hate to tell you guys. You went around Chevy Chase Circle. But Prince George's Community College is closed, and it's not their idea. Believe me, there's some bummed out teachers. You guys are going to have to make all this up, watch TV, or else come to the show. This is uh, Mona, Bo Diddley's Mona, 99.1 WHFS in Annapolis, Baltimore, Washington. Wow, that sounds just like little Waller, doesn't he, on that tune? Almost. Little, little Walter's, <laughs> almost. He, he that was the last guy. Little Walter. Like, one of the last guys, guys to play with Little Walter before he died. Oh, that's right. Who, who is this? Little Walter. What about him? Who's the? I was one of the last guys to play. Me and uh, two other guys from Quicksilver backed him before his so lady hit him over the head with a wine bottle. Didn't he die in the snow? Something? No, like he that? died. His old lady hit him over the head with a wine bottle. It didn't break. Oh. Well, that's a true story. And that's the, I don't know if that's the official story, but she went into shock. She goes, she and her little thing was, and I've broken dozens of wine bottles, and they always broke. She hit him with one and went thunk, you know. I guess he didn't have time to finish it. So you did, did, did he like you guys when you backed him up? He hated us. I'm sure he must, must have been He good. hated us, but you know what? At the end, he loved us, and he offered us a job. He said that he could guarantee us $10 a piece a night. And he was serious. He looked us in the face and said, Come out in the road with me, I take care of you, get at least ten dollars a night. Yeah. And uh that was that was a big high point in my life, actually. I mean Son <clears throat> Sonny Boy he hated the yardbirds. Sonny Boy hated the yardbirds. They made him do the record, right? Mm -hmm. Alan Wolf hated Eric Clapton and all them British guys they made him record with. They had some nerve hating those nice young white boys. Well, you know, like That's like a... when when uh, um little Walter played with us, like he hated us so bad, like he had he had an all white band backing him, you know. 
same thing. And he used to sit there and look at us and go, and he goes, you boys go out and, and warm up the audience. And he'd sit in the dressing room and just down a bottle of gin, you know. <laughs> and then finally somebody would have to go drag him out there and he'd come out and he'd just scowl at the band and then he'd pick up the microphone and apologize profusely for the band. <laughs> he was like, I'm sorry, but they gave, this is what they gave us, you know. And we backed it for 10 days. At the end of uh, the time, it was like he was coming out with us and he thought, of course, we did take him out and get him laid too. That helps. Yeah. Were you guys doing all of his, all of his classic tunes? Oh, yeah. In fact, I had to show him how to play my baby. Did you have to learn him off the record, or did he have to learn him off the record? No. No, I learned him off the record years before I was a big fan. Like I said, I played with him for nothing. I guess uh, Matthew was also. Yes. He got stuck. He got stuck in uh, um, San Francisco and with no band. He thought that the band was going to be provided, and he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going, okay, boy, get up there and play. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and he was used to somebody holding him up, first of all, you know. <laughs> But what a fantastic guy, except when we met him, he was so burnt out. Uh, he was playing My Babe as a 12-bar. <laughs> my da 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 at least he walked away knowing how to play what my baby, which is like a real feather in my cap. I, uh, I guess so. Now, what, what is this, John, about you? Your, your godfather is Jose Turby? That's right, my what, God. What? My first piano lessons came from Jose Turby. How, how did that happen? Did I guess some, some quirk of... of well, relative. my mother was going out with him, if you must know. At the time, they, my mother was uh, his star pupil. He used to love to take young people off to the side and teach him, and they had a thing. We lived with him for, for quite a while. Being a native Californian, and I am as native a Californian as you can be, both sides of my family have been in California since the 1850s, both my father's and my mother's. Then you have some kind of historic family, or? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. I mean, no, no outlaws in the family. I didn't say that, you said that. Oh. No, on one side of my family, they're all either cops or robbers. That's on my mother's side. Now, your mother was a concert pianist also? Is my mother was a concert pianist. In fact, she can still play the shit out of any one of us in the family. Everybody in the family is a musician, I must say. Really? That. really Except, uh, that's why I got into guitar, because I come from a keyboard family, and they could all just play circles around me. That's why Nikki gets on my family so good. Mm -hmm. I brought Nikki home one day, and he was... My mother's got these two grand pianos dovetailed together, you know? Uh. And he's going, well, come on, let's do some playing, let's <laughs> do some playing. She's going, oh, no, no, no. At the end of the night, they were doing eight hand shit. Two oh, of them. Really? They sat so, down there, each one of them was playing four hands. <laughs> and finally, Nikki went. And to this day, he calls her mom. Of course, he, oh, man, I don't even want to get into this. But, disgusting. But, he's got but, his own room there. And, <laughs> They made you do it since you were from uh, two years old. You started. I started. Playing. I started reading music when I was two years old. Yes, I did because um, my uh, mother just didn't like the idea of me and my twin banging on the piano. We go out there, we get a Reader's Digest and put it on the piano upside down. And go, <laughs> <laughs> so when I was very long, young, I learned where the, uh, you know, the little B was in the middle C, and there's B above the middle C. When did you find out you didn't like there. pianos? When, when did you find? As soon as I found out that I couldn't play it very well, I found out that everybody else. I love piano when my report cards would come out, stuff like that, you know. I get a report card. It and they'd say B isn't above middle C, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they would say F is not even supposed to be in there. And I get a report card. I could sit, I'd play the piano until they, my fingers were bloody because there was an unwritten law in the family, you know. When the kid's playing piano, you don't touch him, you know. And I got into guitar because I found out I could just lie my way. You know, I could dazzle them with bulls. And, yeah, well, look at this. This is an augmented design floor, you know. <laughs> and I was also the first person in my family to learn how to play by ear, which just confused the shit out of them. Excuse me. So you uh, you moved to Sausalito after this was all over, right? You're Mill Valley. You're actually Berkeley to Mill Valley and to Sausalito. I was born in Berkeley, and my parents were divorced in Berkeley. Then I moved to San Salvador which is why they're still fighting down there. San Salvador, what, what were you doing there? I was there for my health. I was there because, uh, I was there because I was there from three to six. <laughs> Not in the evening, but I mean, age-wise. <laughs> and I mean, I, why was I there? Because I was three to six and I went where my mother took me, right? And then before that and for a while after that, we lived in uh, Beverly Hills, where they turbied. Beverly Hills? Yeah, well, you live where you live, you know. That, that ruins your image. I'm sorry. It spoils the whole job. No, I've got, when I had blood in my veins, it was blue. I must say that, too. Spoils you know? the whole John Cipollina image. Yeah. Oh. Well, I spoiled a good part of Beverly Hills, too, if that makes you feel any better. <coughs> you my parents playing? moved to uh, uh, Mill Valley in 1949. We moved there before they had, I don't think they had one hot tub there when we first moved there. And um, 
and I still live there. I've lived, uh, I lived in Sausalito because my mother actually was the one who kind of used to tell me about how neat the Bohemians were and on the houseboats and stuff. And I moved into the, the houseboat section and immediately learned about drinking cheap wine and taking pills and smoking drugs and, and going crazy. And you know, actually lived on a boat, didn't you? I lived on a boat for a long time, yes, yes. And, uh, You're right home here in Annapolis. <laughs> yes, I am. Actually, I was living on a boat, getting from the car inside this place here. <laughs> actually, um, yeah, actually. So you started playing folk music. Is that, that's what everybody was doing back then, right? Everybody was, except for me. I really didn't play folk music because I was into electric guitar. I was captured by electric guitar. I heard uh, um, Mickey and Sylvia, Love is Strange. The first time I heard somebody bend a string, that classic lick that... Mickey, Mickey Baker, did And I went, whoa. And I remember being a little kid and asking my mother, what is that? And she said, Johnny, that is an electric guitar. And that was it. And my mother used to go to Sherman and Clay in uh, San Francisco and buy sheet music every week. And I went with her and I said, Mom, I'll meet you in the musical the instrument department. That's when I saw my first Fender. And I, it was the most evil thing I had ever seen. And then, of course, that was before I saw a double cutaway Gibson, which was just like a cross between, you know, sacred and profane, you know. Everybody else was playing folk music back then. Though, Everybody right? else was. I was wearing long sleeves and dark glasses and going to the hoot nannies, and they're going, no way, B, we're so into our workout. They weren't going to let me on the stage for nothing, you know. In fact, there was only one folk singer that ever did let me on the stage, and that was Barbara Dane. Nobody else would have anything to do with me. And then I ran into a bunch of flamenco players, and uh, there was a flamenco troupe. And I ended up living for a short while, like about eight months, on a houseboat, an old ferry boat, with a flamenco troupe, which, is, which influenced my playing quite a bit. And they didn't care. They were funky. I mean, flamenco musicians are funky. You want to play electric guitar? Go ahead, you know. Brow, you know. We'd sit there and we'd jam out. But the folkies didn't have anything to do with me. And then, of course, when we started rock and roll, it was our first attempt at uh, at punk, at just being punk, you know, because it, it was pretty gauche. So, uh, you, uh, you played like Manitas de Plata, huh? Manitas de Plata. Oh, you plugged in. Yes, I plugged in, but my complexion wasn't quite as bad as his, but God, I sure tried. He's still one of my favorite heroes, I think. Now, how did you form into this band, Quicksilver? Right? You got together with a bunch of guys? I got together with Quicksilver because they wouldn't let me join the Charlatans. Who were the Charlatans? <laughs> Dan Hicks. Dan Hicks and company. <clears throat> Mike Wilhelm. Yeah. Uh, George Hunter. The first, first San Francisco bands. Uh, Richard Olson and uh, Mike Ferguson. And they were the first band. I'll tell you, the first time I saw them, they were at a friend of mine's place, a guy named Mark Anofsky, who's, who's credited with starting the San Francisco scene. And he had a place called the Red Dog Saloon. And I walked in there, very young, very impressionable. And I see this band with hair down to their backs, you know, dressed authentic Western. These guys styled. And these rednecks walked in the, in the bar with a rope. Let's get those faggots, you know, and I'm going, <gasps> you know. And the piano player reached in the back and pulled out, and never will forget it, a little Beretta, held it up and fired three.